Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out Shell V Power Nitro Plus and checking out plenty of visual aids along the way as this is a new fuel that Shell has just released and basically we're going to be looking at what are the publicly published claims that Shell makes about this fuel because that's what they have to back up with testing and so that's what I'm going to be looking at and trying to explain here. So what is the goal of this new fuel which they've created? And this is basically their new premium fuel. Uh, and the goal is to minimize and eliminate gunk, corrosion, and wear. Those are the three things they're trying to target with this new fuel. And so we're gonna look at those three things, talk about where they can cause problems, uh, what tests Shell used in order to you know, determine whether or not their fuel was superior versus others, and then what claims they make. So starting with the first one, gunk. And gunk is essentially just carbon deposits that you have that build up within your engine. And so these can occur on the intake valves, on the fuel injectors, can also occur on the pistons, things like that. Uh, and so what Shell does is they use a standardized test, industry standardized test, ASTM D6201. And what I'll do is I will include links to all of these tests if you're curious about how the test is run in the video description, so you can check those out. But this is the test that they run in order to test for carbon deposits. And so let's go ahead and look at the results of some of this testing that they've done. So on the left side we have, um, that's a competitor premium gasoline that's been used. Uh, Sold in the U.S. market. This is a U.S. market uh, competitor, um, over 5,000 miles and, and in a relatively short amount of time you've got a significant amount of uh, gunk buildup, essentially. Huh. With the Shell V-Power Nitro Plus gasoline, um, to toss point earlier on detergency, we keep this, mm -hmm. we keep this clean. We offer unbeatable protection against gunk. Uh, translation to that is you can't get cleaner than clean. So, um, this is as clean as it gets. is a lot less than a thousand. Yeah. So, from a, uh, from a statistical point of view, <laughs> from our testing, you just, you cannot beat what we, well, what Shell offers in this, in this package. So, these valves look exactly the same. So, they, these are tested in identical engines. I mean, not the exact engine, obviously, but it's the same type. They're, they're matched pairs of, or matched vehicles. <laughs> they match sets of vehicles that we test these in. Okay. Uh, so these would have come out of uh, the exact same uh, vehicle model. Okay. But different different vehicles, but same model. Right. right. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yes, at the beginning, these valves would have looked to the eye identical. Yep. The uh, from the very first tank, uh, it, it, within the very first tank, it, Shelby Power Nitro Plus cleans up 60% of the gunk on average that's already existing on the valve. So in one in the, tank. In one tank. So, so it starts reversing that process. Exactly right. So you've accumulated gunk, as Charles, as you put it, um, possibly with a lower quality gasoline, accumulated gunk on the back of valves. With Shell V-Power Nitro Plus, you start to, uh, to remove those deposits, you know, like on average 60% within the first tank. 60% so sounds like an incredible claim. It's a, a big number. It's a big number. And that's what? injector tips and piston crowns? That particular number is it in intake valves. But the on but port injection on port okay. Um, but in terms of the the trend or the effect, it would have obviously a, a cleanup effect on in injectors as well. But the sixty percent specifically is around the average of sixty percent is specifically around intake valve deposits. Okay, so Shell's claim with gunk is that they have unbeatable protection against it. And so essentially what this means, if we're to put on our lawyer hat uh, and define what does this word mean, well it basically just means you can't do better than that. Uh, and so basically another fuel could be as good out there. It is possible for another fuel to be as good, but you're not going to do better than it. And you know, by looking at the testing that we saw, you can see that they actually did really well uh, as far as how much carbon deposit they had build up on that. And so I kind of thought to myself, you know, maybe this isn't something that's all that common carbon buildup on valves, things like that. So I was talking with my friend Charles, the humble mechanic, and asking him if he had, you know, any experience with this. And he's taken apart plenty of Volkswagen engines, uh, always has an opportunity to look at the intake valves. And so he sent me picture after picture of all these different intake valves. And some of these, you know, as low as 15,000 miles, some of them with, you know, 50 to 65,000 miles, but quite a bit of carbon buildup on these intake valves. And so it was surprising to see that, especially with the low mileage vehicles, 
So it kind of confirms, you know, that it is accurate that carbon deposits are certainly a problem and it can happen on cars even with very low miles on them. For example, like this image here where it's only got 15,000 miles on it approximately and you can see quite a bit of carbon buildup on the valves. And these are simply cars that are brought into the dealership. So just everyday drivers uh, unknown what fuels they're using, but you can see it's not doing that great of a job of getting rid of the gunk on the intake valves. Okay, moving on to the next one, corrosion or essentially rust uh, that could occur from moisture or contaminants within your fuel. And so basically what this can damage, your fuel pump, your fuel lines, this can occur in your fuel injectors. Uh, and so obviously you don't want that to occur. And so the test that Shell use uh, for this corrosion test is ASTM D7548 and D665. And so let's go ahead and check out the results from that testing. So this is an industry standard test that uh, evaluates the uh, corrosion properties of, of fuels. So what, just to kind of give you an idea of what, uh, what we have here, on the far left side is, it's a spindle, it's, kind of, it's a spindle test basically. So okay. um, it's a metal spindle specimen. That's the base specimen. Uh, the middle is Shell V-Power, the spindle after testing with Shell V-Power Nitro Plus. So again, you can't get less corroded than that. So this hasn't gone, undergone any this testing? This hasn't undergone any testing. Okay. This has undergone the test with Shell V-Power Nitro Plus. Okay. And this has uh, been tested against a competitor fuel. So, I mean, it's a very clear v visual demonstration of, you know, this is basically rust. So in the vehicle, what are those components meant to simulate? So, you know, moisture can be present in the fuel, so it is meant to simulate anything from the fuel pump Fuel Filter. injectors, okay. Yeah, uh, possibly even into the uh, into the cylinder itself. Um, clearly, depending on the manufacturer, the the material, the metallurgy, the materials can vary. Um, but again, this is why we use an industry standard test to characterize the uh, the um, ability for the fuel to protect against corrosion. What's the interaction between this spindle and the fuel and whatever other component uh, that? I guess in the test, like how does that test it, work in a, in a simple terms? I guess I'm asking. Just my understanding is it soaks. <laughs> it soaks. There's it's a okay. yeah. There it'll it'll be in there for a specific a specified amount of time mm -hmm. in a specified um, basically mixture of, of fuel and, uh, and and moisture, basically or water. Okay. Um, and uh, and then at the end of the test, this the specimen is removed. So other than um, the, other than like moving around, shaking around, to my knowledge, there's not much okay um, else to the test. So. Okay, and Shell's claim here is that they are unbeatable once again. So basically, as good as you can get, you can't do better than that. Um, you can't get cleaner than clean is what Shell likes to say. But essentially, you know, you're not going to have rust. Uh, you're not going to have corrosion occurring in this fuel uh, because of its additive properties. So finally moving on to wear, and this is the loss of material from metal on metal moving contact. Uh, and this can occur in the piston assembly, in the fuel pump, and in the fuel injectors. And so the test that Shell uses to test for this is ASTM D6079. And this is actually a test for diesel fuels, but they've just modified it for gasoline uh, for their testing. And so basically we can go ahead and check out uh, their representation of this test. So this is actually done on really small ball bearings and you're measuring uh, micrometers of wear. And so it's not really that easy to visualize. Uh, so they have basically made this visualization here with these larger ball bearings um, where you can look at them and basically see, you know, this is one versus the other. It has more wear, but it's just a demonstration. Essentially, uh, what you're going to want to look at um, is the graph that they have on their website. So I will include a link in the video description, but essentially what you can see is they've measured their wear here, and this is from 500 to 900 micrometers. And as you can see, all of the different categories of the different fuels which they've tested have had significantly more wear. And so Shell makes the claim here that their fuel is superior, superior to the other fuels out there, uh, basically saying that they've got the best one uh, compared to what they've tested as far as wear and the wear that occurs uh, with using their fuel versus using another fuel. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.